My name is Jeff Stout. I'm a professor at the Berklee College of Music, professor of brass, but I also teach improvisation and the history of jazz. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about practicing patterns. A lot of students that come to Berkeley uh, have some experience at improvisation, but many students have almost no experience at improvisation. So they have questions and maybe some misconceptions. One of the misconceptions that a lot of students have is they think that by learning theory and harmony that then they'll be able to improvise. This is not true. Theory and harmony is very important if we want to be an educated musician, but a knowledge of harmony and theory alone will not make you an improviser. Another question that I hear a lot is that students say, when you're improvising a solo, what are you thinking about? Which is a good question. And the answer to that is very little. What actually goes on inside an improviser's head when they're actually in the process of improvising is that he or she is singing to themselves. In other words, inside of their mind's ear, they're hearing a musical idea, whether it's a rhythmic idea or a melodic idea. And here's the hard part. When they hear that idea inside their mind's ear, they're able to instantaneously and by reflex execute the idea on whatever the machine is. In my case, the machine is this. Saxophone is this. Piano, this is the machine. So the idea is to develop the ability to instantaneously transfer the musical thought in your mind's ear to your machine by reflex. That means that you don't have to think about it, that your fingers automatically go to the right combination of valves or keys or right place on the fingerboard if you play a fretted instrument to reproduce the idea that you're hearing in your head. This is not easy. So the question is, how do we develop the ability to do this? And the best way to do it is to practice patterns or exercises, some people call them licks, so that we can play them in every key without having to read them. Because when we improvise, we're not reading. There's no visual representation. Our technique responds to an oral representation, something that we're hearing. There are three types of patterns that we need to master in order to be able to translate our idea from our mind to the horn. I'm going to give you an example of each of those patterns in their simplest form. There are only three types. The first type of pattern is a pattern that's diatonic. That means that it stays within one key and that it moves for the most part by step. So that type of a pattern we would call a scale pattern. Here's an example of a basic scale pattern, the type that you would find in any uh, trumpet technique book. It's a major scale pattern starting on the third of the key. Major scale pattern. Diatonic, stays within the key, moves mostly by step. But in order to be able to use this pattern or any part of this pattern when you improvise, you would have to be able to play it fast by reflex and in any key, so that you could play it without really having to think about what you're playing. Like that. And I'd want to be able to do that in every key. The second type of pattern, oh and by the way there are dozens or even hundreds of scale patterns that you could practice. Uh, the second type of pattern would be a pattern where the notes move by consecutive half steps. So in other words, we would call this a chromatic pattern. Here's a very simple chromatic pattern that goes up and down a major third. Again, in order to master that pattern so that I could use it when I improvise, I'd want to be able to play it very fast, over and over again, any starting note, uh, any register, any position on a fingerboard if I were a fretted player, 
so that I can play it like this. I could be playing that and be thinking about what I'm going to have for dinner at the same time. The fingers automatically are going to play it. And again, there are many different types of chromatic patterns that you can play. Patterns like that. You can come up with dozens of different chromatic patterns. The third type of pattern, which is maybe the most difficult, would be a pattern where the notes move by consecutive skip. They don't move stepwise, they don't move by half step, they move by interval. So a pattern like this we would call an arpeggio. Here's a basic jazz arpeggio. A major seventh chord starting on the seventh. And again, I would want to be able to play that in every key, repeated and fast. I want to be able to do that on all my chords, not just major seventh chords, minor seventh chords, uh, diminished chords, dominant seventh chords, all my seventh chords. When I improvise, I put these patterns together. So, for example, I may play this in the course of a jazz solo. That sounds like a jazz pattern, a jazz lick. And if we analyze that, we can see it's those exact three types of patterns. The first thing that I played, it's the same arpeggio, I changed the rhythm of it. Then I played a chromatic scale down a major third, just like the one I practiced, and scale pattern, and I ended up on the ninth, which is a good sounding note. The point is, if I hadn't practiced patterns like this, maybe I would have heard it in my head, but maybe I would have missed it, not been able to execute it. Or maybe I would have been able to play it in an easy key, but maybe I would have missed it in a hard key. But because I've practiced these patterns in every key, if I heard it in the key of E or F sharp or B, I could play it. Let me improvise a little bit for you. I'm going to play a standard tune called There Will Never Be Another You. And if you listen to what I'm playing, you'll be able to hear different patterns, chromatic, scalar, or arpeggiated. So if you listen carefully to what I just played, you could tell he's playing a scale pattern, he's playing chromatics, he's playing an arpeggio. To learn more music this summer at Berkeley, go to www.berkeley.edu slash summer programs and a wealth of material will be there at your disposal. Thank you.